Listen up, get ready, I'm not gonna take no more. There's a revolution, a revelation going on in my soul. Buckle up, get ready, we're not gonna sit back. Okay, welcome back to more of the Live from the Heartland show for the week of April 1st. Uh, that was a nice little musical break. And now I'm gonna bring on someone who I had on the show four years ago in her first attempt become the Alder Woman of the 46th Ward. Uh, we're going to talk with Angela Clay, and I'm I'm so glad to talk Uptown. You know, I lived in Uptown in 64, working for some anthropologists, hanging out in alleys and gangways with old Southern white minor guys. And then I came back with Joint Community Union for a number of years, where we had rent strikes and marches on the police station. Uh, so we keep our eye on Uptown. We were really glad to have Hel our friend Helen Schiller be the alderwoman for a while. You tried to take over that slot four years ago, didn't quite make it, but you finished first in this year's election with, I think, 38 percent. So good afternoon to you, Angela Clay, and how are you? I am awesome. Thank you so much for having me. This is a full circle experience. This is awesome to be here four years later as the top contender in this race. So, so excited to be here to talk more. Thanks for having me. Well, good. Let's, uh, you know, the Sun Times has been billing this as a uh, establishment versus the progressives. And I, I think your, your opponent is a woman named Kim Walls who, uh, seems to be getting a lot of support from outside. She works for Walgreens, which is kind of rough right now with Walgreens and their policy around certain pills. Um, but, uh, you know, you've been a, uh, while she works for Walgreens, I think you've been a housing organizer. So yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll talk more about the race. Yeah, so this is uh, this is my home. The 46th Ward has actually uh, raised four generations of my family. We've lived here for over 80 years. I recently became a mom at the height of COVID. Shout out to all the parents listening on here. And it has been a dream come true to make sure that our community has representation in city council from our ward. I attended our public schools. I currently sit on the local school council of my former elementary, Joseph Brenneman. I graduated from the wards only high school, Uplift Community High School. It used to be Joan F. Arai Middle School, which a lot of our neighbors attended. And then I went and studied public policy at DePaul. Um, it was there that I really started to see how policy impacts people's lives. And that's where we have to get in front of making sure that we have effective policies. I was the youngest pre youngest president of a 51-year-old housing non-for-profit called Voice of the People. So oh. I was working with a very large budget, uh, over 150 units of real affordable housing uh, at a very early age. And it taught me that you have to bring every single person to the table to make sure that we are making these decisions together. I ran four years ago without any experience in working intimately on a campaign, uh, but my neighbors pushed me. They say, Angela, you are from this community. You always show up. You are at the forefront of making sure that your houseless neighbors have the resources that they need, that we are advocating for safe spaces for young people. You name it, uh, we are there. And so we ran, we came within 300 votes of actually making the runoff with no money, no campaign staff, no office. And so the work didn't stop. COVID came and it only got harder. So for uh, over three years now, we've been doing mutual aid where we give free food away to our neighbors, PPE protection. Um, and we've been fighting to make sure that this beautiful community invests in people and that we're also developing without displacing our most most vulnerable neighbors. So I am extremely proud to say four years later, we are the front runners of this race. Uh, we started out with six contenders. And a few weeks ago, we got uh, the top spot against big money. Uh, this, this race is coming down to people versus profit. And the people spoke up and said that they wanted a leader that was going to be holding to them and not outside interest. So I'm extremely proud of of our results, and I cannot wait for April 4th to get here so that we can uh, continue on as usual. 
Well, it's getting close. This is actually, we're recording this on the 30th, which is opening day for the White Sox and the Cubs. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is for the week of April 1st. And um, election day is on to next Tuesday. So uh, people, most people will probably listen to this or see it uh, over the weekend. And who knows uh, what kind of influence our little interview may have. Um, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about Uptown. Um, for me, Uptown, you know, was filled with poor people, but it was quite a, a high-end kind of a community in the late 40s. I first showed up there in 64, and I thought of it as kind of hillbilly Harlem. And there was a lot of Southern white migrants there. Yeah. There was also increasing number of Black people. There were increasing, there were always a number of Native Americans. And there was a small Black community, I think around Clifton, uh, that little area in there. Okay. Um, Tell us what the ward is like now, because I, I know that uh, there's been a lot of development and it's right by the lake and uh, it's right by public transportation yeah. and it's uh, it's ripe for development and gentrification, et cetera. But as usual, when we have those things, we don't always take care of the uh, people who live there. And yeah. in this case, it's not a gentrification set most of the time. Tell us yeah. a little bit about Uptown. Yeah, so Uptown specifically, we are one of the most diverse wards in the entire city, maybe one of the most diverse communities on the face of the planet, honestly. We have been a um we have been a home to neighbors all across this city when uh, certain parts of the city would not build affordable housing. We took that on and we said, we will build that for you here. We also have just been home to a diverse uh, mixture of cultures. Uh, we have neighbors who are refugees from out of this country. We have neighbors who are, you know, third generations because their families migrated over here. And that is the culture that I want to make sure that we are protecting is that we are continuing to be an open space and a home for so many different people right now, because we are a stone's throw away from the beautiful lakefront. We are within a uh, walking distance of public transportation via the red line, the purple line, the brown line now comes all the way to Wilson, uh, bus transportation, any and everywhere. We want to make sure that we are showing up for people who have been here, who have been through the struggles of us changing and morphing into um, a community. We have gone through extreme gentrification, Mike, if I can be um, very frank, over the last frank, 10 years. This is the kind of show where you can let it <laughs> we, have, uh, we have lost over 2,000 units of truly affordable housing in the last 10 years. And with that has been replaced with upper luxury developments. Now, the the issue has never been about a specific type. It has only been when we are saying we want to prioritize this type of development over anything else that we could be putting here. So when developers are coming into our ward and they are saying, I want to throw up a luxury high rise, we are saying, OK, what are you building that is affordable on site? And they haven't been doing their best. They have been paying into the low income housing trust fund to avoid having to build true affordable housing in this community. And that's a problem because community and stability go hand in hand with the housing. And we can't just ignore that. As a community of families, we're only catering right now to studios and one bedrooms, right? Which our families and our public schools that are nearby are going to suffer because their families need somewhere to raise their children to send to our public schools. So right now we are at a very teetering moment where there's been a huge robust boom in development. The development has been an issue because the current zoning and development process that our outgoing alderman has is not equitable. It does not look and reflect the diversity of the community. Catwoman, right? Yep. Yep. And so now we have an opportunity as a community to say, okay, we need to be at every single decision making table when it comes to how we progress as a community. It can't just be one sided. It can't be just uh, down to how much it, your income is, because you know who's really being impacted by the raising rents and the skyrocketing property taxes? It's our elders. 
our elders are feeling the pinch right now. And so our great community that it has always been is now at a point to say, okay, are we going to continue to just let outside interests tell us what we want as a community or as neighbors? Are we going to stand together and elect someone who's going to have our best interests at heart to make sure that anything that comes through our community has our approval first? Uh, Angela Clay, uh, I'm, I'm re as I drive around uptown uh, or through it these days, I noticed that one school has already become condos. Uh, Stewart School Lofts. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I'm probably be a nice place to live, but it's too bad that there isn't more education going on. Uh, talk a little bit about the forces uh, of development and gentrification and the money that's going into the race uh, to your opponent. Not oh, yeah, that's uh, one of the biggest issues is, you know, we talk about, you know, reform, political reform, campaign reform, where we separate big money from true elections, right? Because we we hold the leaders that we elect to the same highest standards as everyone else. But unfortunately, we have allowed outside money and outside interests, specifically the folks who are profiting off of this community, to try to throw and install a candidate that they pick that is basically going to do their bidding for them. And we have had so much money, Mike, spent in this race against us, against the top contenders, against the community, because they are afraid. They are afraid that, again, we are going to put people first over profits. Our race is the only race outside of the mayoral race right now that has unlimited income contributions. And that is because my opponent has had over $150,000 poured into independent expenditures, um, donations to oppose us. So the income limits have been blown off, not because we have raised so much money. <laughs> it is because outside interests have said, I want to pick who your next leader is because I need them in city council to do my job. So now people are starting to wake up. They're starting to see, okay, these attack ads that I see against Angela are coming from outside charter schools, you know, like when did the charter schools get so interested <laughs> in our education in Uptown? When did they, you know, enter the conversation of the race or we have this big get stuff done pack, which is, you know, being spearheaded by a former Rahm Emanuel uh, consultant, which we don't know where all of this money is coming from. It's just being poured into this pack to oppose us. And it's not because they want our best interests at heart. It's not because they truly care about safe schools or safe communities or affordability. They care about their bottom dollar. So this race has really come down to people versus profit. Uh, the people of this community deserve to have ownership in the decision-making process. They deserve to have transparency around some of the things that we want to do here. And I want to make this clear that it's not that we are anti-development because that's never that's never been the case. The issue has been when we are developing, are we developing equitably? Are we developing with our families in mind? Are we developing with our elders in mind and everyone in between? Angelina, uh, let me ask you, uh, uh, I got a couple of questions. Let me ask what you propose, uh, what makes you the person people should vote for? and some unique things or special things you plan to introduce once you are the alder person of the 46th Ward? Yeah, so I say I, I am the uh, the name on the ballot, but it is the people behind me, Mike. This has I, been a long time coming for generations before me. Folks who were in this community um, doing foot patrols when landlords were setting their buildings on fire to collect the insurance money and killing neighbors in the process. This has been a continuation of the Black Panther Party, who was up here setting up shop to make sure that our young people had free breakfast programs. This has been a very long time coming to send someone from this community who understands what it's like. I grew up in affordable housing. I grew up in affordable housing, and I'm like the poster child of why we need affordable housing, because that affordability offered my family 
stability and a great community. And it also offered me as a young person growing up while I was in college, the stability of living somewhere that was affordable, that was safe, that was clean. And that's something that I want to make sure that we are doing and providing for future generations. I want to make sure that development is going up with on-site affordability. I want to make sure that we are building options like co-ops. I really want to look at all of the resources that we have at our fingertips and not just saying we want to continue to build luxury rentals. That's just one form of housing. Where are the other forms of housing that we could really be pushing here? I also want to make sure that we are supporting our small business owners. The 46th Ward is home to some of the most amazing uh, businesses. The, for God's sakes, I have the <laughs> have the Riviera, the Green Mill, all within walking distance. Gino's Pizza. Gina, okay, I have Michael's Pizza right here. I have GGO's Pizza. I have some. GG, of the, right down, I have some of the most ethnically beautiful restaurants in our ward, and I want to make sure that we are supporting them because after COVID, a lot of them are struggling. A lot of them, unfortunately, didn't make it. I want to make sure that they have the support. I actually want to build a mentorship program with our young people so that they are able to get gainful employment in our small businesses in the ward and actually learn what it takes to run one. I also want to make sure that we are building strong relationships with our police officers. Our police officers right now are under some immense trauma, immense stress, and I want to make sure that as a community, they are getting not only the support that they need to do their jobs effectively, but that they are, again, getting out of their vehicles, engaging with neighbors, getting to know us, and really being a part of the community that they serve. So those are a few things that I think people really need to understand is that I was not sent from the political machine, as we call it. I was sent from the people and the people who have been in this ward and even new neighbors. I have neighbors who are They've been in this war three months and they've hopped head in first to say, I support you. I appreciate this community and I want to be a part of making it greater. And I truly appreciate that because that shows you how intentional we, we are being. For God's sakes, I've got translated literature in over 10 languages to make sure that every single neighbor gets the message and that they understand that this is the type of candidacy that I'm going to carry into this office. I want to make sure that I'm being transparent, that I am being um, I am being intentional about the information that I am getting in front of you and that I'm doing it with you. So I think that is what really separates us. We haven't taken any donations from big developers, any outside corporations. Our money has come from, shout out to the Chicago Teachers Union, the Illinois Nurses Association, and every neighbor in between. So a real grassroots organization. Uh, Angela, uh, we are recording this on Thursday the 30th, so it's only Friday, Saturday, Sunday for five days till election day. How does it look to you and what do you plan to do with your campaign workers for the next few days? Oh, baby, we are all hands on deck. <laughs> it looks great, Mike, if I could be completely honest. we I don't say that, um, you know, thinking that we've got this in the bag, but I do say that with all confidence in our people. What we have is something that other people, no matter who was running in this race, does not have. And those are relationships. Those are relationships that go back decades that we are able to connect with people, get in buildings that no one else can, and really motivate them to get out. And, it's a and skill you forward. develop in Uptown. It is. It is. But you have you're to know. You're passing out literature, selling papers, <laughs> doing rent strikes. <laughs> yeah, you get to know how to. You get to know how to organize. If you are from Uptown, you are a natural born organizer. And so these past two weekends, we've had over a hundred volunteers out with us, all volunteer based, uh, coming from all across the city, coming from all parts of our ward who are dedicated to making sure that they are getting in front of neighbors, expressing that, yes, you voted for us and you got us in this top contender seat, but you have to do it again. That's the hardest thing about a runoff, Lord, is reminding people that you must come back out and vote. Uh, we are going to be spending our time doing a bunch of voter contacts. So I've got tons of meet and greets and follow-ups going on this weekend. I have an entire day 
set for our elders and making sure that we are getting in front of them. And then our young people, our young people are really instrumental in this race. We have been making sure that we are registering them to vote. I have first time voters coming out and voting with their grandmothers. So it's been an amazing experience. I'm I'm truly honored. I'm humbled by all of the love and the support because it comes from neighbors. Right on, Angela Clay. I wish you a good fortune, good luck. And uh, once you are installed as the Alderwoman of the 46th Ward, I hope I get to hang out and talk to you and get you back on this show. We can do that over GGO's Pizza any day. Right on, sister. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Have a great one. You all.